SV Math Teach back again. This time we're talking about proving congruence. Now in the previous video I showed you this symbol which is the symbol for, well, it's like the geometry version of equals. It means that all sides and shapes and angles are all the same from one object to another object or one shape to another shape. Um, if we want to prove congruence, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll give you two images like maybe the the blue triangle and the purple triangle and we'll say are they, look this is the statement, is the blue one EFG congruent to TUV, that's the purple one, are they congruent? We put a question mark after that, we ask the question is this the case and then the explain part is you need to tell me how we do that. It's a little bit different than compound transformations but we're really just describing them instead of actually drawing them. But sometimes the drawing part comes in handy. Now before I show you kind of my pre-made answer to this one to speed things up, this one doesn't give me anything that I normally really latch onto. I really like it when some of my objects have sides that are kind of flat on the grid, whether left and right or up and down. And this one purposefully does not have that. So I need to latch on to something else. Um, and I'm going to latch on to, frankly, just the thing that caught my eye. The shortest side, GF, and its equivalent shortest side, UV. Do that again there, UV. Now if I delete a few things up here in the description, what you might notice is I have something that I can latch on to more. G to F is the last two letters in the description from right to left. So V to U are the last two letters in the other description from right to left. So that means that if I want to be even more precise, G and V as the last letters in our descriptors, G and V are the corresponding pieces. And here's what I observe. I have from G to F up and right from V to U is down and right, and that immediately looks to me like a rotation. However, I also recognize something else. I recognize that there's one space from the origin here on kind of the pointy purple, but two spaces here from the pointy blue. Now that's not super precise, pointy blue and pointy purple, but I think we'd recognize that rotation itself will probably not account for that, especially if we're rotating around the origin. So this to me looks like we're going to have to do more than one thing. So my strategy typically becomes let's try to get some common points. And I mentioned the pointy purple and the pointy E. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make those two points touch. So look what I did here. I took the blue shape. Once again, cleaning up just a little bit here. I took the blue shape and I translated it straight up until the pointy blue was touching the pointy purple, right? Or E and T. The first touched the first. That's another way to think of it, right? A little bit more precise. So I moved it up. So I'm going to translate the blue. So triangle E, F, G, one, two, three spaces up. So step one translate triangle EFG three spaces up and I get this image. So now let's focus on this. Now all of a sudden I think I can use that rotation piece before. Remember that point I identified before about how this was kind of up and right and this was down and right? That's a rotation. It looks to me to be 90 degrees which is very common and I also observe that I have a touching point here. Now while I love to rotate around the origin if two points are touching and they're still touching after they've been moved, that means that's the rotation point. And that's a really easy indicator that we are now rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And while I normally like to go around the origin, this point is one space above the origin. So that space is 0, 1. So if I rotate my new blue one 90 degrees clockwise around the point zero 0.01, look what I get. The one lays right on top of the other exactly like it should, and that proves that they are congruent. So I could go ahead and come up here to this top and say, is triangle EFG congruent to TUV? Um, I could say yes, 
and I could simply point to these two steps as my proof that they are congruent. And that is really the task that you're being asked to complete here. I do have a second example. Um, if you're short on time and want to stop at the five minute mark, stop now. If you want to watch one more example, go ahead and watch. Um, but here we go. Same task, just no directions. But I want to prove that KLP is congruent to K double prime, L double prime, P double prime. And a couple things that I observe. Um, I notice they are not touching. I, I think there's going to be a rotation here of some sort. I'd really like to get them touching if I could. So watch what I'm going to do. If it allows me, I'm going to take and make my P point touch the P double prime. So I'm going to translate one, two, three, four down, and one left. Four down, one left. So translate four down and one left. And now I'm going to go ahead and observe that this, this to me is pretty clear. It's a 90 degree rotation. So I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. I, I move up and to the right, kind of in a circle. So clockwise. And I'm rotating around the point where they touch. That's the convenient spot. And that's around negative 2, negative 3. And I'm done. Right, so step one, translate. Step two, rotate. I give some descriptions of how much of each of those movements I'm going to do, and I'm done. So I can prove that these two triangles are, in fact, congruent, or again, they are the same.